uh, today's lecture, uh, I would be giving a, a short of a overview of the functional organization of the spinal cord. Uh, it comprises uh, uh, mainly, uh, mostly in terms of the uh, anatomical, functional anatomical basis of the spinal cord. I have outlined this lecture with the following points. One, I describe about the anatomy of the vertebral column and spinal cord. Very briefly, I will not go into the details as your anatomy teachers do. And uh, I will mention about the, the spinal cord, its placement in the vertebral canal and its coverings, briefly, because uh, we come across these terminologies very often. Then. I will tell about the distribution of the white and gray matter in the spinal cord, how it is distributed and uh, at different levels. Then uh, dermatome distribution uh, of the spinal segments uh, or the, uh, the skin, how, how it is being uh, distributed in the various uh, segments of the spinal cord. Then about the spinal nuclei and the spinal laminae. Then I talk brief. I talk briefly on the ascending tracts. I talk briefly on the descending tracts, and I will talk about the functions of the spinal cord. Uh, here I give a quite a good uh, um, uh, information about the functions. Then I summarize, and I give, I provide you the assignment and references. Uh, this is my plan of lecture. Now we start with the anatomy bearer. Here is the uh, a vertebral column. This is a vertebral column bearer. Okay. In this vertebral column, you have inside inside the column you have this uh, spinal cord, spinal cord, and the roots emerge uh, through these uh, openings here or the, in the column in between. So now we have a. Uh, um, Precisely, the spinal cord is divided into uh, five different uh, segments. Uh, the one which is in the neck, the cervical segment, the thoracic cord or thoracic segment, and uh, uh, the lumbar segment, the sacral, and coccygeal, especially in human and coccygeal sac cord. So these are the things, and each one, the cervical will have eight uh, roots coming out, eight pair of roots coming up, the thoracic 12 pairs, and the lumbar five, sacral five, and uh, then uh, you have this uh, coccygeal one. So that is the uh, distribution, uh, distribution, and um, the spinal cord, is a highway for the communication between the body and the brain. Body means the entire uh, the peripheral segment uh, entering into the central nervous system. And it is contained or it is present in the canal of this uh, bony uh, structure, what is called a vertebral column. I, as I have described, it is divided into five sections cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral, and coccygeal regions. The segments supplying the limbs are enlarged. So that means uh, these are the segments where these nerves supply the uh, lower limb and uh, these nerves supply the upper limb. They become large because uh, of the, uh, the, the amount of um, the motor or sensory inputs from these extremities uh, is increasing. That is why it is more. If you come back to the thorax, uh, it is uh, less. So like that, uh, the segment supplying the limbs is uh, enlarged. That is why we have the cervical enlargement uh, and we have a um, lumbar enlargement. So then this is uh, the caudal end and this is a cranial end of the spinal cord. So this is a, a the large portion is the final terminalis, and this forms the cauda equina. Maybe we will see the cauda equina here. So you can just see that uh, cauda equina uh, very clearly. The same segment uh, 
uh, same segment, what I was trying to talk about, uh, how this uh, spinal cord is um, located located within this canal or bony structure. So that is the protection it is having. In this bony structure, uh, this is covered by uh, membranes. That is the uh, dura here, the arachnoid matter here, and pia matter is uh, within, which is associated with this uh, spinal cord, and uh, dura matter is associated with the, uh, the space. This is a uh, epidural space, this is a subarachnoid space. So this space is a subarachnoid space. When they do the lumbar puncture, they enter into this uh, subarachnoid space, and uh, this this is being filled with the fluid, fluid uh, that is a cerebrospinal fluid. And we have in the center is the uh, canal, the central canal. So now, so we have uh, uh, these uh, these structures. You can just see that uh, the uh, the entire uh, spinal cord on either side, they are hold or they are held by the uh, ligament, what is called a denticulate ligament. This is a denticulate ligament, you can just see there. So that is uh, uh, trying to hold the uh, cord in one place. So it's very friable and very uh, easily, it can be easily distorted. For that reason, it has to be held um, nicely in the bony canal. And uh, these are the spinal nerves this is the dorsal root ganglia there, and uh, the other one, this is the ventral root. And uh, this is uh, the spinal cord transfer section. So now if you, I have already mentioned about uh, these uh, uh, structures because these are the uh, vertebral, vertebrae. So you have these things, uh, the bony process is coming out here. And uh, so this is the uh, posterior side and this is the anterior side. So this is the anterior or ventral, this is posterior or dorsal. This is about uh, how, how the um, spinal cord is secured within this uh, canal. Now coming back uh, uh, here, uh, just uh, uh, you can see the spinal cord and its roots. Uh, they are coming here, here, they are coming here. This one is the posterior root. This is a posterior root. Uh, uh, if you are if you are going here, this is the posterior. This is the posterior here. This is the dorsal root ganglion. This is coming up here. That forms the posterior root. This is a posterior root, and this is the anterior root. This posterior root is also known as a dorsal root. The anterior root is also known as a ventral root. So now this is the posterior. The blue, the dark blue, is the uh, posterior root here, making the dorsal root ganglion. And the the lighter ones, lighter ones are the lighter blue are the ventral roots. They are coming from. They are the motor these things. Now this is spinal cord now making it this H shaped gray matter, H shaped gray matter with a central canal, and this is being surrounded by a um, membrane that is a pia matter. This is covered by the membrane pia matter. Now this pia matter, then we will have. A, uh, a space here in between this pia matter and arachnoid uh, matter. This is, uh, and uh, here it is covered by the arachnoid membrane where blood vessels uh, are uh, present. So then these two layers are covered by external tough layer that is a dura matter which is attached with the bony uh, structure. So if, if I just, just go back here, uh, this is where the dura matter is. Uh, so this is the uh, this is dura matter here, and this is a cushion of uh, a fat for the epidural space, and uh, this dura matter is uh, uh, present in this cushion, and it is attached to the almost near to the bony bony prominence. You can just see that it is it is with the bony prominence. So now this is about uh, the how the roots are coming, what are the layers. Uh, so at least uh, you try to uh, remember those uh, the P A D pad, the pia, arachnoid, and dura are the layers uh, in the in the spinal cord, and uh, this is the central canal, and this uh, this space is filled with the cerebrospinal fluid, and you see this denti denticulate. Uh, uh, ligament, uh, this denticulate ligament, uh, I, I was trying to show here, this is a denticulate ligament. Okay, so now, just one, uh, 
uh, this is again a little bit uh, enlarged view of this thing uh, uh, telling this pia matter the arachnoid matter and the dura matter the dorsal root the ventral root dorsal root ganglion and the um, the uh, various uh, structures so how they are secured in a, this all things are there in the bony canal then these are the so i was telling about uh, this uh, subarachnoid space you have these uh, arteries uh, arterial supply so you have these uh, the posterior uh, spinal arteries and this is a anterior spinal artery so they are there and uh, these anterior spinal artery and the posterior spinal arteries are there in the subarachnoid uh, layer and that uh, that will supply or that will provide these things but however uh, the arachnoid have uh, uh, the blood brain uh, uh, barrier because it will not uh, allow everything to enter into this uh, in, into this uh, pia and the subsequent uh, these things but it keeps the nutri nutrition for the remaining part of the remaining segments of this uh, part and even it provides the energy and the perfusion of the various ions now uh, coming back uh, if this is the transverse section of the uh, transverse section of the uh, spinal cord it's at one on level and here we have a, a number of uh, structures in this uh, transverse section of the cord the blue one is the dorsal root or posterior root the red one is the uh, ventral root or anterior root and as per bell mesenti law the dorsal root carries the sensory information and the ventral root carries the uh, motor uh, information. So that is what the bell mesenti law states. In some textbooks, it is confused with the synaptic transmission. It, it is nothing to do with the synaptic transmission. The work of Bell and Mesenti, they were published separately, and then later on they realized uh, that they are uh, uh, one is from. Uh, uh, different different countries and they they try to establish this thing and finally they joined these two things uh, the anterior spinal nerve roots contain only motor fibers this is anterior the red one and the posterior roots contain the sensory fibers and they he mentioned that the uh, the signals reaching here in the posterior root they are uh, that means the nerve impulses are conducted only in one direction so that means uh, the in impulse is coming from this periphery to the center here and from the center to the periphery this is the direction but uh, this is being decided by the whatever synapse uh, that is the second part of uh, because uh, many of the books are uh, trying to uh, extrapolate this component and trying to tell that in the synapse uh, the uh, the afferent nerves and different nerves and a single synaptic transmission it is the bell mesent did not mention that their work did not contain it the second part uh, the the here the anterior horn this is the anterior horn there and this is a lateral horn uh, uh, this is the anterior horn sorry sorry about that this is the anterior horn this is a posterior horn and this is a lateral horn so these are number one uh, so you the gray matter this is gray matter you have the gray matter here and these are containing the neurons so in the neurons we have the in, one is the anterior horn this is one number two is the posterior horn Two is the posterior horn there, and uh, it's a commissure, uh, the joining between the uh, other side of the uh, other other half of the spinal cord. And uh, four, five, six. Uh, this is the anterior uh, uh, funiculus. The four is the anterior funiculus, the anterior horn or anterior uh, space or anterior funiculus, the lateral funiculus, and uh, uh, six is the posterior funiculus. So now we have the anterior commissure that is seven. Seven is the anterior commissure. Eight is the median, median one, and nine is the posterior median. This nine one. Then we have a, a central canal there ten, and uh, then eleven is the anterior root and a posterior root and a dorsal root ganglia. These are the structures of the uh, spinal cord here, and I have taken it from Wiki. So now. Um, Moving on, so the observations of Bell and Mejendi were uh, summarized by Muller's 
So because the Mueller uh, examined the, the Bell and Bell Mezendiz law that uh, poster route carry the uh, sensory information and the interior route uh, carries the uh, motor information. So what he did, he did the experiments on the frog, and by cutting the posterior root in the frog, uh, they lost. They, they what they what he found, uh, there was a loss of sensation in the limb, but uh, there was no paralysis of the limb. Limb was not paralyzed when he cut the posterior root, but uh, when he cut the anterior root, the limb was paralyzed, but the sensation persisted. So this is what the these are Muller's observations. Uh, the Muller's observation states that cutting poster this may happen uh, uh, here in uh, uh, in human beings. Uh, just just like uh, you, you just uh, see that uh, the polymyelitis. What this polymyelitis does? The polymyelitis destroys the anterior horn cells, especially the motor neurons. So that means there is a paralysis. Uh, sensations may remain because the posterior root is a normal. Then uh, in case of uh, tapes dorsalis or uh, uh, post, uh, the in, 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 in case of the, um, the uh, what is called a subacute combined uh, degeneration, that is the disease affecting the uh, large diameter fibers, uh, which is uh, which may happen because of the B12 deficiency, vitamin B12 deficiency. These posterior roots are uh, uh, affected, and uh, especially the uh, the syphilis and uh, the subacute combined degeneration, in which there will be a sensory loss, sensory loss, uh, which is controlling. So now I have given two examples here. It is the uh, subacute combined degeneration resulting from the loss of the, uh, resulting from the vitamin B12 deficiency or tapes dorsalis because uh, nowadays uh, tapes dorsalis is not seen. So now in case of the interior, I mentioned about uh, uh, the uh, foliomyelitis. So that is the, uh, the about the Muller's observations. Now coming back here, uh, just uh, the gray matter, you just see that uh, this HS-shaped uh, gray matter, the HS-shaped gray matter, you have this is posterior horn, posterior uh, segment and the funiculus, posterior funiculus and the lateral funiculus and the ventral funiculus. And uh, you have this uh, uh, posterior horn and uh, this is a uh, uh, anterior horn. So this is how it is divided, a dorsal horn, ventral horn and intermediate column. This is intermediate column. This, uh, the green one is the intermediate column. So how this the shape of these various structures change in the different uh, segments of the um, uh, spinal cord. You start with the, uh, the sacral, because the number of inputs, uh, the number of muscles, this is small. You see the uh, volume wise or size wise, it is smaller if you are thinking about the diameter of these things. And as it ascends up uh, in the lumbar, it is becoming larger because a large amount of information coming from the lumbar cord, keeping the same dorsal and ventral relations. And uh, uh, these are uh, even because of the uh, supply to the motor nerves and the sensory inputs. Uh, so the uh, gray matter is more. You see the large amount of gray matter. Here, the gray matter is more there. And as it comes in the thorax, uh, the gray matter becoming less and the white matter is increasing and even gray matter is again. But uh, when you come back to the cervical, where there is cervical enlargement, this gray matter is more. So this is what is happening in a different uh, uh, levels of the uh, spinal cord. Now, the area or the innervation of a skin by a single dorsal root ganglion or a nerve from a single dorsal root ganglion is known as a dermatome. And uh, uh, this is a beautiful picture. I love this picture because it, it provides us all the, uh, the uh, dermatome pattern of the, our, our body. You can just see that. Uh, this would be dealt uh, uh, wonderfully in your uh, anatomy classes. You just see that uh, here, uh, just uh, uh, this lady sitting there and uh, this, this blue component is cervical. The, the red component is uh, thoracic. This purple, uh, light 
purple is the lumbar and the six is the blue uh, uh, dark purple is the sacral segment same thing here you can just see how the dermatomes are distributed so that means uh, this one starts here the c2 c2 here coming coming on the head here then c3 here in the neck neck c4 again in the neck here anterior part and um, uh, c5 coming to the biceps area that is in the hand uh, then c6 is the the radial side uh, and the seven is the uh, hand and the radial side, 8 is the C8 is the uh, ulnar side, uh, T1 is the ulnar part of the forearm, and the T2 is the, um, uh, this is the axillary and the uh, upper brachium, and the remaining thoracic segments, uh, T1 to uh, T1 to T12 are uh, distributed here in this pattern. Now we have the lumbar one hip region, then uh, the Again, the hip, lower hip, and the thigh, L2. L3 is the knee region. L4 is the um, the calf or the lower leg. And L5 is the foot. And the S1 is the heel. And the S2 is the back of this. And the S3 is the buttock. So this is how the uh, whole thing is uh, uh, distributed. This is the dermatome pattern. Maybe this uh, idea, I think uh, if, you, if you try to look into this, uh, picture and try to visualize uh, whenever we are trying to uh, map uh, these things uh, sensory and uh, motor examination and uh, all those things uh, uh, they can be visualized very easily suppose if you have this thing in your uh, uh, mind you can be able to answer very easily and uh, this one gives you a very broad view that means the cervical is this much and the thorax is this much, and um, the lumbar is this much, and sacral is this much. So you may not be able to make mistakes, and then you may be able to make it a final adjustment with this figure. And I have taken this figure from the University of Texas um, online uh, resource material. Now, this is spinal cord uh, nuclei, because uh, we, we saw the if, if you are looking at here, these are the horns. These horns are gray matters. These are gray matter. The gray matter contains a, a neurons of the cell bodies. And these neurons are arranged in clusters. So now, on one side, we have the various nuclei of the spinal cord. So now, these nuclei, uh, starting with the uh, cap-like cap structure, this is a marginal, marginal nucleus marginal nucleus uh, where sensory information coming is uh, some part are relayed into this thing and they will be uh, communicating with the intersegmental uh, uh, neurons. Then substantia gelatinous cells, especially the thermal and uh, nociceptive inputs, uh, they relay here. Then nucleus propriosus, uh, as it indicates, it's the proprioceptive inputs, uh, they are relayed here. Now, all the proprioceptive, that means the position sensor, they are either uh, going to the, the segmental reflexes or going to the cerebellum. They are uh, relayed here in the propriosus, nucleus propriosus. Then this is a dorsal nucleus of the clerk. This is the dorsal nucleus of the clerk. So this would be uh, making from here the impulses from the, um, the various parts of the muscle uh, are in body, they are coming here, they are sent, they will then relate in, they are going as a um, dorsal uh, spinocerebellar tract. So that means it will communicate with the cerebellum. So then intermediate, intermediate lateral nucleus, uh, uh, this is the nucleus for uh, the uh, sympathetics. Sympathetic, especially this is dominant or predominant in the uh, thoracolumbar uh, segments. A lateral motor nucleus is the alpha motor neuron, and the medial motor ne neurons are the gamma motor neurons. Uh, this is the, uh, the, the various uh, nuclei of the spinal cord. So some group of workers, uh, they, they try to see, because uh, they try to see or see the arrangement of various uh, neurons in a rex or a laminar uh, pattern. 
rex star laminar pattern they divided the entire uh, spinal cord into 10 lamina so you can just see that uh, number 1 to uh, number 10 so uh, this is uh, lamina 1 that is somewhere somewhere here then lamina 2 that corresponds to the substantial gelatinous cells then we have a 3 and uh, a 4 you have a 5 here so all these uh, whatever the inputs coming uh, this uh, the, the purple one or the violet one the inputs coming from the, uh, the body uh, all the sensory inputs are relayed here and the intermediate one or they have the interneurons uh, and they will uh, try to ascend up they will be number eight and uh, number 10. And uh, these one will be making a synaptic contact or a synaptic neurons uh, of the um, motor, motor, this thing. So that is how uh, this color coding is talking about. And when, why I am telling all these information, uh, uh, when I try to discuss uh, further whenever we take, take certain uh, uh, sensory modalities. Uh, the information, the whatever the nerve coming from a touch uh, is relayed into, I will say that it is relayed in lamina 2 and lamina 4. So that means uh, it relayed here, one set of neuron, and uh, there is another set of neuron here, four or five, and these two are intercommunicated. So there is a network of these uh, uh, neurons here in this lamina. So that is the importance. I'm not going into the detail because each one has a uh, distinct uh, features, a distinct characters, a distinct set of neurons uh, that will be, um, uh, I, I think it's, it may not be, uh, it will be beyond your uh, scope. Now we move on to the uh, ascending tracts. Now, if uh, the, because I said the spinal cord is the highway for the transmission of impulses from the body to the brain or brain to the body. So that means there is a separator, separator, and this separator one once in one set there is a up one side direction that is the ascending tracks. These are the ascending tracts. We have uh, three columns. I'm just telling uh, a spinal cord has a three column. This is a dorsal column, a lateral column, and the ventral column. And these set of uh, neurons, they have uh, uh, these bundles. These are a fasciculus. Fasciculus is a bundle. These are the white matter. These fibers are a group of uh, uh, fibers. They are ascending up as a, a bundle. And uh, in, this is the posterior horn. You just see that this is a dorsal column. This is a posterior column. This is also known as a posterior column. And in the posterior column, we have one medial portion, one uh, the little lateral. This is medial. This is, a, this is if you are taking, this is the medial portion. And this is the uh, lateral lateral portion that is uh, near the uh, gray matter, this H type of uh, gray matter there. So now these are known as a post, uh, the primarily the fasciculus gracilis, fasciculus gracilis or gracilis bundle, the, exactly the uh, uh, tract, tract of gracilis, gracilis tract and uh, cuneatus, uh, cuneatus uh, uh, tract. So cuneatus is the uh, tract which uh, takes the information from the upper thorax and the neck. Cuneatus had neck and head. This this information is coming here. Uh, gracilis is the uh, lower uh, thoraco, lumbar, and uh, the sacral uh, lower 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 below the thorax. Below the thorax, uh, these are the information. All the touch and the fine uh, touch sensation vibration and uh, tactile localization, all those things are coming from for these things. But it is only a, a shorting or a differentiating. This is a, a, a thoracic, upper thoracic and the neck region. This is the lower thoracic and the, uh, the leg region. So like that, the fasciculus, you can just see that uh, this is a, a cuneatus, this is a, a gracilis. Because uh, uh, gracilis in the in the lower limb it starts as one because there is no cuneatus in the uh, sacral segments. In the sacral segments you have the gracilis. As the fibers ascend up, the the new fibers come. They will push this thing uh, the medially. So that is why we have the space here. 
Then comes, uh, we have the cerebellar spinocerebellar tract. This uh, tract goes to the cerebellum. This is a uh, dorsal side that is in the posterior side. This is the posterior uh, spinocerebellar tract. If there is a posterior spinocerebellar tract, there is a what is called a uh, ventral, ventral or anterior spinocerebellar tract. So you just see that this is ascending. This is ascending to the medulla. The fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus, they reach the medulla because the nucleus uh, gracilis and the nucleus cuneatus is located in the medulla. And uh, this is a spinocerebellar that is, it is going to the cerebellum, the dorsal, from the dorsal side, and it is going to the uh, cerebellum, relatively ventral side. Then we have a, a spinothalamic tract. So this is a lateral spinothalamic tract. So that means that it, it, it carries the uh, sensation of pain, uh, thermal sensation, group touch, and all those things. And we have, if there is a lateral spinocerebellar tract, then we have a anterior. If there is a lateral, there is the anterior spinothalamic tract. This is the anterior spinothalamic tract. Okay, so now we have uh, some tracts of which carry the information uh, from the spinal cord uh, to the midbrain or upper pontine areas, uh, spinotractal and uh, spinoolivary tract, because the spinoolivary and spinotractal tract. So these are basically all the ascending tracts. One, the vesiculus gracilis, vesiculus cuneatus, dorsal spinocerebellar, the ventral spinocerebellar, a spinothalamic tract, and a spino in lateral spinothalamic tract, the ventral uh, spinothalamic tract. So then we have the spinotectal and spino olivary. So now we have uh, other tracts. Maybe as as I discuss in the in, in the subsequent classes, wherein I may add up new things. When I add up new things, I will mention about that. This is about the ascending tracts. So same thing I am just showing you in a more amplified way because you are sitting with a mobile phone and maybe I try to expand it. Again, I repeat, uh, fasciculus gracilis, fasciculus cuneatus. Gracilis is medial. Dorsal spinocerebellar, the ventral spinocerebellar. Spinothalamic. Then this is... Uh, these are spinotectal or spinocollicular and spinoolivary. Or they are also there are also some 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 of those things which are not mentioned here. Spinoreticular, spinoreticular fibers. So that means the some some of them they go up to the reticulum, uh, reticular system in the uh, midbrain and uh, medulla. So then this is a uh, uh, anterior spinothalamic and this is a lateral spine. Okay, so now there are intersegmental pathways uh, that we have not shown here. Okay, these are the ascending tracts. Now, what are the descending tracts? So that is uh, coming, that is going in this direction. These are, uh, the blue ones are uh, uh, the return direction. So the return direction is the descending tracts is the lesser tract, lesser tract that is sitting on the uh, cap, uh, marginal nucleus. This is marginal nucleus. You can just see that. Uh, so the lesser tract that this only descends for a few segments. It's not for all the entire segments. Uh, then we have a uh, lateral corticospinal tract lateral corticospinal tract whatever the uh, from the cerebral cortex uh, we get information to the spinal uh, motor neurons so this comes here in the uh, lateral corticospinal tract and uh, this lateral corticospinal tract because it starts on the other side of the brain and comes in the medulla and crosses here and reaches maybe i will tell about these things in the detail but this bundle is a uh, the lateral corticospinal tract and this exons then they enter here in the um, the um, the lateral nucleus or lateral uh, uh, part of the this uh, ventral ventral uh, uh, horn cells ventral horn cells uh, ventral horn neurons so that means if i if i 
if I'm going going up here, maybe I, I yes, I just say that uh, the lateral corticospinal tract uh, they sense information to these uh, motor neurons here, and from this motor neuron, the alpha motor neurons reach, and uh, that will emerge to the muscles. So like that. So now this is a lateral uh, corticospinal tract. So now. Then you have a small one, this is called a rubrospinal tract. A rubro is a red, red nucleus to the spinal cord. So rubrospinal is the uh, midbrain, uh, red nucleus is a midbrain structure, and uh, that also sends information uh, for the motor activity. This is a rubrospinal tract, you can just see that. It is associated with the lateral uh, spine, corticospinal tract. Now, uh, if there is a lateral corticospinal tract, then there should be a ventral uh, corticospinal tract. So ventral or anterior corticospinal tract, you just see that. This is an anterior corticospinal tract. Here in this side, if you are looking at, uh, this is the anterior corticospinal tract. So then we have other these things, reticulospinal tract. So this is a reticulospinal tract, and this reticulospinal tract is coming from the medullary areas. It, the, med the reticulospinal tract is divided into two components, one coming from the medulla and other coming from the uh, pontine and uh, the midbrain, ponto mesenchymal reticular system. So now, this is a medullary reticular area. This is the medullary, medullary reticulospinal tract. So now, if you are, if you are looking at this part, is the ponto reticulospinal tract. Okay, so then the vestibular system, vestibular, the semicircular canals and the autolith organs, they, they send information. This is a vestibulospinal tract. This is a vestibulospinal tract. You can just see, see on this side. Then we have the colliculus because we, we saw that the spino collicular or spino uh, tectal uh, spine. Uh, fibers there. Now, from the tectum or from the uh, tectum, or there is a midbrain structure, so that descends to the spinal cord. This is a tectospinal tract. I mentioned about a pontine reticulospinal tract. This is a pontine reticulospinal tract. Then comes, uh, I mentioned about the anterior corticospinal tract in reference to a lateral corticospinal tract. So now we have the uh, medial uh, medial uh, longitudinal fasciculus, uh, they will carry some information about the uh, proprioception and uh, other uh, sensory modalities. Okay, so these are the various uh, ascending, uh, uh, various uh, uh, descending tracks because these are descending from the brain structures, uh, the medulla, midbrain and the cortex. So uh, if, I, if I were to uh, revise, revise these things, maybe I have put this thing uh, taken from uh, Genong. On one side, we have the descending tracks here. Maybe some amount of uh, modification. You just see that uh, it is not exactly the uh, same in, in all the uh, textbooks, but uh, broadly there is an outline. This is a lateral corticospinal tract this one, this component, and somewhere here is the rubrospinal tract. So you just see that from red nucleus, it is coming from the cortex to medulla and downwards. Then olivospinal tract, olivospinal tract, that olivary nucleus, so that was not there. Then tectospinal tract, that was there. This is a tectospinal tract that's descending. So now this is a ventral corticospinal tract. You just see that this is a lateral corticospinal tract. This is ventral corticospinal tract. So then these are uncrossed fibers. After reaching here, they will they will then. Then we have the vestibulospinal tract. Vestibulospinal tract. So this is about all the descending fibers. This side we have the ascending tracts. So ascending tracts, I start with the the fasciculus gracilis, the, uh, uh, from the lower limbs, the fasciculus cuneatus bundle of uh, cuneatus bundle or cuneatus tract, then dorsal spinocerebellar, the ventral spinocerebellar, then uh, uh, lateral spinothalamic, then uh, we have a ventral spinothalamic tract here, and we have a spinotactal.
So maybe there are some other uh, inputs of which we would uh, consider in the uh, whatever the discussions to when, when we, whenever we get. These are broadly. I want uh, uh, you to practice these uh, uh, diagrams. Practice these diagrams in your uh, uh, as, as a home assignment because this is one thing uh, would be asked or would, you would be you should be familiar with this. Then coming back, what are the functions of the spinal cord? Here we touch uh, the basically the uh, the physiological component of the uh, lecture. So now the spinal cord uh, is. Uh, it has a sensory component or it performs the sensory functions, it performs the motor functions, it forms, perform, It is a center for reflexes and it controls the autonomic activity. These are the four uh, things it performs. So now already we in Bell Magentilla what we have said the posterior root is sensory, the ventral root is motor. Now coming back what are those sensory functions? So these sensory functions include transfer of signals from body to brain, from the various part of the body. So from the skin, the fascia, the bone, uh, the, all structures, uh, muscle, uh, ligaments, and uh, this, uh, the information from the, or the signals are carried from the uh, dorsal root uh, nerve and then enter into the uh, dorsal root in a different uh, uh, layers or nuclei of the uh, spinal cord and then sent to the uh, respective areas. That is one uh, transfer of signals from body to brain. That is now, so it will have, because uh, once while transferring, uh, it will talk to the neighbors. Uh, that means uh, the one segment up and one segment down. That means uh, there are uh, intersegmental and uh, segmental uh, uh, communications because it talks to others. Uh, it talks to the, these uh, neurons which are coming up, uh, have a synaptic contact with the neighbors and uh, the one who are situ situ situated above the segment or below the segment. So that is another thing. This is important for coordinating the action because I have to move certain actions. This does not only because if I were to contract, it, it is involving groups, different segments. That particular muscle has been uh, this thing because it's not uh, purely one segment. So that means a transfer of information from one segment to other segment or within the segment. Then signals are shorted, so that means uh, uh, pain, uh, the touch, fine touch, the vibration, they are shorted, they are going into the posterior column, posterior column sensation. So uh, they are known as uh, the uh, from the, uh, new, uh, the fasciculus gracilis or fasciculus cranialis. Uh, the pain and uh, uh, pain and the uh, thermal sensations or lateral spinothalamic tract. Or a crude touch is uh, pressure, crude pressure is in the anterior spinothalamic tract. Like that, there is a shorting of the information, and this particular shorting is taking place in the laminae, whatever I have listed. So that means uh, in the sensory function, it is shorting the signals and uh, shorting the information, and it will take send uh, the this part here, this part there. It's like a post office. Uh, if it is going to Bangalore, Bangalore, uh, this thing is added up, or if it is going to some other place, uh, or Tirupati, Tirupati things are put. So like that, uh, there is a shorting of the signals here. The signals which are uh, fine touch on one side, pain and thermal sensations on the other side, uh, proprioceptive on one side, like that. So then after the shorting, they process the signals. Uh, what is this processing means? The processing is a first, uh, there will be a convergence because all these inputs are coming and uh, uh, converging, uh, converge on one uh, target uh, neuron. And this our uh, target neuron or projecting neuron will, uh, that, that they are all coming there, relaying there, there's a convergence. And this uh, from the target neuron that either goes to the thalamus or to the, uh, some part in the uh, reticular system. So that there is a convergence of the convergence of these things. That is one one type of uh, um, 
processing. Then when converging, they, the, these have a collaterals, uh, they will inhibit the lateral, uh, lateral neurons so that uh, the information uh, passing through the central uh, projecting neuron is uh, powerful or clear without, uh, without any uh, confusion. So that means there is a lateral inhibition, but the side ones are inhibited. So that is focusing the, the information. Then sometimes, depending upon, because I talked about the synaptic facilitation or the synaptic inhibition, and they, this is the sort of the uh, function there. So that means uh, either they are inhibited or facilitated. So that uh, uh, they, this is a part of the signal, whether they have to be uh, uh, either giving a, a greater facilitation so that the information is uh, uh, taken in priority. So then there is what is called a gating, especially certain information are gated. So these information like a pain, if the pain is there, if you are stimulating a neuron or a, what is that uh, acupuncture, there will be uh, the pain is uh, um, subsid, uh, reduced or uh, decreased or lost. So this is a gating. So these are the processing happening in the spinal cord that is all happening at the sensory level or in the posterior horn or the dorsal horn. Then what are the motor functions? So if you are looking at the functions, I have divided into uh, three components. So one, the purely motor, then involving the reflexes, the segmental reflexes, then thirdly, involving the postural reflexes. Let me come back to the purely motor. The, the motor neurons uh, I mentioned, uh, we have the, the medial and uh, lateral nucleus. Uh, they, the lateral nucleus contains the alpha motor neuron, medial nucleus contains the gamma motor neurons. The alpha motor neurons supply the extrafusal fibers of the muscle. Extrafusal fibers are nothing but the, the fibers which contract, uh, which produce the muscle contraction. The gamma motor neurons are the uh, neurons which supply the intrafusal fibers uh, of the muscle, these are uh, intrafusal fibers uh, are uh, uh, governing, they are, uh, they are governing the uh, sensation. So they, it's the uh, sensory input, uh, that means uh, they, they detect the stretch. So these are uh, fusimotor fibers or intrafusal fibers, the gamma motor neurons. Then the spinal cord links both alpha and gamma motor neurons. So now what happens when gamma motor neuron is stimulated, it will activate the muscle spindle or the intrafusal fiber, the muscle spindle, that the muscle spindle increases the activity in the posterior root, posterior root. And this increased activity will uh, make a synaptic contact with alpha motor neuron. So like that, uh, alpha and gamma are linked. So rather I would say that gamma and alpha linkage. Alpha is not the first one. It starts with gamma, then ends on uh, alpha motor neuron. So then there will be a control on the segmental and suprasegmental control because uh, uh, the um, same muscle is not coming from a single uh, segment, uh, other segments because uh, it has to involve uh, some of the uh, fibers to be inhibited, some of the fibers to be facilitated, and uh, for that reason, the motor, this is the motor function. So I mean to control alpha and gamma motor neurons. The control means what? They send information. The second, the linking gamma and alpha, then uh, uh, trying to modulate or regulate segmental and suprasegmental activity of the motor neurons. Then they they become a center because uh, a spinal center for these segmental reflexes especially the myotatic stretch reflex when you have uh, stretched the stretch the by a knee jerk knee jerk the knee hammer so then that will uh, excite the intrafusal fibers the intrafusal fibers in turn send sensory inputs to the uh, through the posterior root to the alpha motor neuron and produce the contraction. This is known as a stretch reflex and this is also known as a myotatic stretch reflex or it is known as a knee jerk or it is known as a, a deep chandan reflexes.
this is uh, about a myotatic stretch reflex so then another uh, reflex is uh, the polysynaptic reflex especially the withdrawal reflex when you touch a heart plate you withdraw it so this withdrawal uh, it is it is originating from the nociceptive uh, the painful inputs and these painful inputs uh, are trying to protect you or uh, withdraw you these are called the flexor reflexes these are called extensor reflexes these are called the flexor reflexes so that means withdrawal reflexes so then there are if there is a too much of a stretching there is a what is a called a inverse stretch reflex uh, there is another circuit operates on this thing i will i will talk about this thing when i talk about the segmental reflexes then we have a cross the extensor reflex so that means uh, uh, when you have uh, one uh, reflex is activated here the opposite side the extensor group of muscles are activated so that is a cross the extensor reflex these are some uh, segmental reflexes uh, uh, it it performs that is very important for the integrity of the uh, various uh, spinal uh, motor activity then we have postural reflexes postural reflexes uh, if you take for example uh, if you happen to go to visit a, a baby or a newborn infant of course nowadays it is uh, uh, very difficult uh, that you try to move or you are in the house and you have a baby in the house and you try to give the baby your fingers in the hand it will try to grasp that's a grasp reflex so that is automatic automatically it holds on to this thing so that's a grasp reflex so that is a, a basic uh, uh, reflex which uh, which exists uh, even uh, uh, at the time of birth or immediately after birth so then there is what is called a positive support reaction because whenever the foot or the limbs are placed there will be a sort of a the inputs from the uh, inputs from the uh, skin uh, on these areas uh, they will uh, send the impulses so that the extensor get uh, activated that's the extensor support so that means they will uh, make the limbs as a rigid structures or a pillar like structures that is a positive support reaction so uh, this is a postural reflexes where the center is in the spinal cord so here the inputs coming from the uh, whatever the uh, cutaneous inputs uh, are the sensory inputs and then they will make the active and sometimes what happens this the other part other extensor muscles if there is too much of this thing then this gives away that is a negative support reaction so that means uh, uh, there is a positive reaction and a negative this is called a magnet reaction that means rigid then comes uh, uh, the this in the spinal cord is the center for a primary uh, pattern generator for locomotion so the locomotion if you are uh, trying to see uh, any any animal any animal even including human being uh, you try to move your limbs so the uh, the limbs uh, that means uh, the one limb goes forward and then the second limb goes forward so that means in a sequential manner the the forward sequential forward motion of the limbs that's very beautiful beautiful thing that organization is there in the uh, in the spinal cord and uh, uh, not only that organization if you are looking at the uh, say for example homo sapiens we are uh, we do not we have the lower limbs only for the motion if you are looking at the quadrupeds the, the four legged animals uh, you have to have if they have to move they have to move the uh, the forelimb also the forelimb and hind limb should be uh, joined so now in case of homo sapiens what we have that our uh, uh, previous um, the animals have done is uh, in comparison to the forelimb what our forelimb does is the swinging swinging of the arms so you can just see that uh, uh, one leg is moving the opposite is moving in that direction like that so this is exactly what happens if you are looking at a you are a four legged animal and you can just see that uh, particular concept so so this is a pattern generator that means a, a group of neurons which are activated uh, they are activated in sets or in
in uh, uh, sin they are sensory in sets so that they are activated there would be a forward movement especially the forward motion of one limb and uh, the uh, maybe we we think about a, a dog or a cat so then you will know exactly how the upper and uh, the fore limb and hind limbs they work in uh, um, in the edge unit for the motion so this is a pattern generator here in the spinal cord it is present and it is present in the lumbar and the cervical areas because the lumbar area uh, governs the lower extremity lower limb or the hind limb and the cervical area governs the foot limb so this is the postural reflexes i mentioned so then comes the autonomic nervous system because the sympathetic outflow is through the lateral horn cells present in the thoraco lumbar region that means it's coming from the thoracic and the lumbar segments so the lateral horns intermediate intermediate lateral nucleus whatever else so that means that sympathetic nerve supplies from the top to the bottom the top to the toe top to the toe you can just think about that maybe pupillary reflexes they whatever the uh, sympathetic supply there there is a uh, dilatation dilatation of the pupil because of the adrenergic activity so that means uh, uh, starting from the pupillary reflexes the circadian activity or the cannon's responses the fight and flight response uh, which is activating the adrenal medulla or control of the heart and blood vessels this is a sympathetic uh, coming and uh, a control of thoraco lumbar uh, visceral activity so i am i'm talking about all viscera uh, present in the thoracic uh, and uh, abdominal uh, compartments so they are these viscera uh, maybe glands in uh, whatever they they want to do then uh, the smooth muscles so they are uh, this thing and then uh, in case of the uh, the was difference they will produce the, uh, the contraction of the spinal vesical muscle and the was difference uh, that sets in the ejaculation reflex uh, ejaculation reflex in uh, uh, males uh, in uh, in this uh, that's the sympathetic activity so that means uh, if sympathetic is paralyzed uh, so if you are looking at the if you are looking at connect with the sympathetic and ejaculation, ejaculation reflex uh, if you block the sympathetic uh, there may be a problem in the ejaculation he may have the erection erection is another response here which is a parasympathetic activity so that means uh, this this uh, ejaculation is the contraction of the spinal vesical and the vas difference uh, so that is uh, responsible by the are mediated by the sympathetic nervous system and the sweating response or so sweating response is a, a sympathetic or cholinergic fibers uh, which are supplied to all sweat glands uh, throughout the uh, body and there of course there is uh, some uh, differences in the sweat glands so i'm not going to detail the parasympathetic activity because vagus and uh, other cranial nerves they govern the other uh, parasympathetic unlike sympathetic is only the spinal output it is the thoracolumbar output parasympathetic activity it is restricted to the sacral area these are known as a sacral parasympathetic they govern all the pelvic viscera all the pelvic viscera that is the colon kidney ureter bladder and urethra okay so thus they control the bladder bowel movement and uh, sacral parasympathetic that is through the pectoral serapis they control the penile erection and this penile erection because of the increased blood supply to the penis carpo carpora cavernosa and that would make the erection so that is the parasympathetic activity uh, suffice to say that uh, the spinal cord is the center for uh, uh, the entire sympathetic activity so because sympathetic activity is required for the heart blood vessels and even the blood vessels are reaching to the brain or to the toe wherever and the uh, adrenal activity and the pupillary reflexes so you can just see that and uh, if you are looking at the parasympathetic it is only the pelvic viscera that is controlled by the parasympathetic nerve now 
coming summarizing the important connections here i'm just uh, trying to make uh, we have the cervical segment thoracic segment lumbar segment and uh, uh, sacral segments and these are the nerves coming up here so now if you are looking at here uh, broadly uh, this is c1 to c3 it's supplying the neck muscles the c4 is a diaphragm important respiratory muscle and the C5 is your deltoid, the shoulder muscle. And the C6 is a wrist muscle. C7 is the triceps. C7 and C8 are the fingers or the hand. Then comes uh, the T1 hand. Then uh, T2 to T12 are the intercostal muscles. That's the trunk. Then uh, T7 to L1 is abdominal. And uh, T11 to L2 is a sympathetic uh, uh, coming out that's responsible for the ejaculation reflex. Then L2 governs the hips, the quadriceps muscle, L3, L4 and L5, uh, hamstring muscles at the knee, and L4 and S1 foot. You go back to the diagram of uh, that, um, if, if, you are, if you are going back here, the, 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 this beautiful diagram, you can just see all this, uh, whatever I was uh, uh, trying to depict. Uh, okay, so now come back, uh, come back to this. Uh, here so now uh, then s2 is a penile erection s2 and s3 or the uh, bowel that means the defecation reflex and uh, then uh, a bladder is a micturation reflex or the bladder control this is not only reflex emptying even holding so these are all uh, governed by these uh, uh, reflexes these are the important connections i'm trying to uh, summarize here uh, what i talked so then, uh, to summary, it is a link between the body. Spinal cord is a link between the body and brain. It is present in the bony canal, that is a vertebral canal, covered by a pia, arachnoid, and dura, and filled with a fluid and a adipose tissue or the fatty tissue, so that it is protected. It contains outer white matter and inner gray matter. If you go back to the central nervous system, where in the brain, uh, the, uh, the inner white matter and outer gray matter is just reversed in the central uh, compartment. So here, its outer side is the white matter, the bundle of nerve fibers, and here is the nerve uh, neurons. And it is divided into three horns, dorsal horn, lateral horn, and ventral horn. Dorsal sensory dorsally sensory and ventral is motor laterally sympathetic especially uh, thorax and uh, lumbar segments uh, this uh, transfers uh, the functions if we are looking at it uh, transfers signals it processes signals shorting focusing gating facilitation and suppression it performs the sensory and motor functions it is the center for basic and tonic uh, or the uh, segmental and the postural reflexes. And uh, it, is, it is a primary pattern generator. It has a primary pattern generator for locomotion. The secondary pattern generator is present in the midbrain. Midbrain, because you a, a person with a spinal cord only cannot walk, but uh, the spinal cord has the centers which have an alternating uh, situation setting. Then uh, it controls the autonomic activity sympathetic to all parts of the body parasympathetic to pelvic organs uh, so this is the summary of uh, what i what i focused today and uh, uh, these are the uh, textbook guidance the textbook uh, the candles the genong and uh, uh, you can go back to this thing this is a beautiful uh, online uh, that is from the university of texas uh, uh, you can just go to that. The, the chapters are available freely there online. You can just uh, study some part of it. Is uh, it's coming from there. Now, uh, next uh, class I will uh, mention. I will uh, discuss about the spinal shock because this is an important uh, topic. Now I have uh, mentioned about the spinal organization. Now I will talk about the spinal shock. Now uh, these are the. Uh, some assignments I am trying to give it to you yeah, as a part of the um, questions because you you will be wondering what type of questions may come in uh, come in on this topic. So now uh, I would uh, request all of you 
uh, make an attempt to draw a labeled diagram showing both ascending and descending charts. Please practice. Please practice. And uh, then draw a label diagram showing a white matter and a gray matter of the spinal cord. Enumerate the functions of spinal cord. So that means uh, all those four functions, the sensory, motor, reflexes, and uh, autonomic. Then uh, write short notes on bell Mezendi law. This, this is coming. Or Muller's observations. The postural reflexes of the spinal cord I mentioned. The autonomic functions of the spinal cord, that means thoracolumbar outflow. Sometimes they will they will give a short note on thoracolumbar outflow. Physiology of the spinal parasympathetic, that means the sacral uh, parasympathetic. Uh, sacral parasympathetic. Uh, so that means uh, the erection, the bowel, and uh, the bladder control. Then uh, uh, dry a diagram showing the spinal lemini. You try to uh, make the diagram. And uh, mint are dry diagram showing the nuclei of the uh, spinal cord. These are some of the assignments I'm trying to give it to you uh, for today. And you work on it and uh, you do with the laser.